Hi, this is Russ Anderson. In this tutorial, we're going to take an introductory look at geometric hierarchy tracking. And in fact, this is so simple that there's no hierarchy at all. We're just going to be tracking a box to this truck. So this shot is from our friends over at Hollywood Camera Work. You can pick it up yourselves there. There are also some directions for that in the Synthize manual. So to start with, we're going to go over to the geometric hierarchy tracking room brings up the panel and it flips us over to the perspective view. We're going to lock the perspective view up to the camera and now we're ready to start creating a simple box to match this truck. So I'm just getting something that's at all in the general ballpark. Doesn't matter the details as of yet and I'm going to hold down control and drag this handle just to rotate it to a more similar orientation and you notice these are world coordinate handles you can select local ones if you want it's more convenient to do this all in wireframe modes this is a backslash key to switch to wireframe mode now we're ready to start with the pinning operation and there's a special tool for that this is just a toolbar within the perspective view, and you'll notice there's quite a number of them. So we're going to tell it we want to create and edit pins. We're going to tell it to compute the field of view, and that's a key point. The geometric hierarchy tracking process does not compute a field of view by itself. If you were doing a regular object track using supervised trackers or automatic trackers, say, you would get a field of view, but not with this geometric hierarchy tracking process. You need to have an initial field of view value, which you can get from an onset measurement, or here we're going to use this pinning tool to compute it for us. We're also going to have the pinning tool compute the right dimensions for our box. So we just have uh, configured this appropriately. And now we're ready to start doing our pinning. So I'm going to hold down control so that we snap to these vertices. And I'm just going to start moving the pins around, saying where I want the vertices to be. So now we have some initial placements. And now I'm going to use the right mouse button to drag and zoom in. And you can see that there's actually a couple inch wide strip at the top of the truck. You can see this ribbing on the truck that's behind it stops about there. So that's, that's actually the spot that we want to align with. Same thing up here. Now I'll just do a middle drag to move over and sequence through these. You can also use the scroll wheel to zoom out and zoom in once we already have done a 2D zoom into the image. If the 2D image isn't zoomed at all, then the middle mouse button scrubs the time bar. So now I've set those things all up. You might have noticed along the way some of the little crosshairs got a little out of sync. That's what happens when there's clash between them. And, and that's a hint that things aren't matching up quite the way you expect. At the very end of the process, you can null out those errors using the toolbar button there. But now we've got our mesh aligned with the object in the first frame of the shot. So we'll close up that pinning toolbar. That, that did uh, zoom us back out, by the way, notice. Whenever you zoom in, you can cancel that zoom just by right-clicking the Pan 2D button. So next we're ready to start setting up the geometric hierarchy tracking itself. So 
I'm just going to click on the through lasso mode. And there are a bunch of different modes that are used for configuring the entire hierarchies. Here, obviously, there's, there's just one object. Um, so I'm going to hold down the shift key, click on our box, and it's now created a new object node in the middle of the box, which is convenient for this particular thing. But you can use the surface mode or the create mode as well to put the node on the surface of the mesh as well. That's more typically useful for secondary tracking sorts of things, but for the basic initial piece of geometry tracking, it's more useful to have that at the center of the object. So if you look over in the hierarchy view, you see that there's this object that hold, it's going to hold all the animation for the object. And the box is parented to the object. And that relationship between the box and the object itself is fixed. All the animation goes onto the object itself. And you'll see in some of our other tutorials, you can wind up with all kinds of additional objects out here as children of the initial one. That's to set up uh, secondary animation effects or animate things like whole bodies and so on. So we've now got our object that we want to track. Now that we need to configure it a little bit. And the buttons over here control what axes are locked and what axes are going to be tracked. So when it's locked, it's blue, and that axis is locked to the spinner value here. And when it's not blue, it's going to be tracked. So we want all these axes to be tracked so that the box can move around wherever it needs to in the 3D environment. So once we've done that, we are ready to do the actual tracking itself. And that's just started by doing a play within the hierarchy view. And you'll see that this is actually quite a stable track. It's a, it's a very large object, and there's some good geometry with the, both the front and the side of the object. So even with the person walking in front of it, you still wind up with uh, a nice, successful, easy track. You can see the error curves down here in the lower right-hand corner. You'll see that the error is increased in the middle part of the shot because you know, the person is walking in front of it. So now let's just switch over to the quad view. Again, this is using the middle mouse button to position things. And now you can see the box moving around in the 3D environment. And the important point to this is that this is more accurate because we've got the entire mesh geometry to, to work on it. It's more accurate than doing the two planar trackers that you might initially be inclined to do if you wanted to do something to the side of the box. But here, because there are two of them and they're connected together rigidly, you can get a better tracking result because of that geometry. You can also look at all of this, of course, in the graph editor. and see all those individual joint variables. So, hopefully this is a uh, good introduction for you to basic geometric hierarchy tracking. You know, here we just used a very simple object, this box. But in fact, this process is typically used with much more complicated objects that you've created one way or another, and typically then imported into Synthize and you'll then track it along with uh, appropriate rigging to define how different parts of it moves. So here we've only got a relatively small mesh, but the geometric hierarchy tracking algorithms have been designed from the ground up
to work very efficiently even with large meshes with tens or hundreds of thousands of facets and vertices. So obviously it's going to take you a, a bit longer to do that, but it's still going to go along at a quite reasonable rate. The, the size of the mesh is a comparatively small proportion of the, the time that's involved. So thanks for watching and enjoy.